My name is Tomáš Petříček and this is an online version of my course Write Your Own Tiny Programming Systems that we are doing at the Charles University. You may be wondering why such a strange course topic and what are tiny programming systems anyway? To explain this, I have to tell you a bit about my research. So I'm interested in the various ways of understanding and improving programming. And this includes things like programming languages and types and theory, but also interactive programming environments and even history and philosophy of computing. And it turns out that if you're interested in those topics, you will end up building a lot of tiny programming systems along the way. So I'll tell you about some of the systems I've built to explain what the course is about. Uh, in my PhD, uh, I worked on types for context-aware programming languages, tracking what your programs require when they run, and to illustrate uh, the ideas, I've built a little web-based implementation of the programming language with a type checker. Um, I then worked on F# -sharp and applied functional programming, and with F# -sharp, I have actually worked on bigger than tinier things, so um, there's no tiny systems there. But then I got interested in uh, data science and tools for non-programmers, and again I've built um, web-based tools for exploring data that I would call tiny. Um, Later on, I worked on programming systems, and again, to illustrate kind of new programming systems ideas, you can do that by building a tiny prototype implementation or a tiny programming systems. And uh, at Charles University, I'm working on things including human-computer interaction aspects of programming and also history, and again, those topics you can explore by building small implementation and some of the systems that you're working with. So I'll give you uh, three different examples. The first one is the CoEffects playground that I've built for my PhD. Um, so this is a little web, web page where um, you can read all about the theory and all about the motivation and so on. Um, but what I want to show you is down here somewhere, uh, there's two different applications of the idea. One is tracking of implicit parameters or sort of special resources or arguments that your program requires. So if I say 10 plus first, for example, and I say check snippet, this type checks this code and it infers that it's some sort of code that will produce a number and it requires an extra argument called FST, which is a number. So if I put 32 in here, I get 42 as a result. Um, if I add another implicit argument, another, another context requirement, then I can uh, put in some numbers and uh, it sort of uh, computes the result. So what's going on here is that there's a tiny implementation of a programming language that you can play with in the web browser. And uh, I'll show you one more interesting example. Another application of the same theory is, uh, is tracking uh, history. So the, up, the idea here is that we are writing some computation and it works with x and y's, so uh, whenever I move my mouse here, you will see uh, the uh, result of adding x and y. So if I move from 0 to the top and right, then the red line is adding the blue and green lines. Um, now what's interesting here is that this is not computing with just single number, but it's actually computing with an entire stream of data. And in my code, I can use this pref keyword um, to access the previous value of uh, whatever, whatever argument I give it. So here, if I uh, calculate the previous 12 times previous value of x, uh, then you can see that the uh, red line is sort of a delayed version of the green. So it's sort of 
shows me a value 12 steps later on. Um, and I can use this to do some smoothing. So here I'll just be um, adding, taking the value of x, but sort of rather than displaying the, the current value uh, as it is, I'm calculating some floating average. So you can see that the red line is more smooth version of the green line. And behind this, there's a small implementation of a functional programming language with a type checker that sort of has a, has a layer of user interface over that. And among other things, I can also explore the, the typing derivations here. So for example, here I've got some example that uh, sort of type checking a bit of code that defines some function, then it defines some argument and it calls the function and I can click through the typing derivation. So the point of this is that um, what I'm trying to do is to show what could this bit of theory be used for if it was done sort of, if it was embedded in a, in a bigger programming language, what could it actually be used for? And the tiny system Behind this is enough to show you that there's different applications, including tracking of some resources and working with uh, streams. Uh, this is not trying to build any real world programming language, uh, but it's just an illustration of the idea. Um, a different kind of system is the project that I've worked on called the Gamma. And what this is trying to do is it's trying to make um, programmatic data exploration accessible to non-programmers. Um, so imagine people like journalists who need to work with interesting data sources. Um, and here, as an example, I'm going to take a data set uh, containing some historical Olympics uh, uh, medal winners. And uh, what I have here is a little editor where I can type some code. But the point of the project is that uh, you can do a lot of things just by typing dot and choosing from the list of available options. So this is inspired by type providers in F Sharp, where you also can navigate through data sources using dot. Uh, but here I can actually do entire data querying. So I can, for example, group the data. And then when I choose this, the system gives me uh, a choice of all the columns from the table that I can use as the grouping key. So I can group the data by team. And then again, the system generates a list of available aggregation operations. So I can, for example, count the number of distinct athletes and I can sum the total number of gold medals that the team has won. And then I can continue my operation and, for example, sort the data uh, by the largest number of athletes or by the largest number of gold medals. Um, so here, I think what's, what's interesting here is that uh, it's, there's a programming language behind this. And the programming language really is just you have uh, you have identifiers that represent objects like Olympics. They have members, so group data is a member, and the member has a, has some type. And then when I look at the members of the type, there's sort of uh, another another list of things. So this is really very much like uh, objects in Java. You have you have classes, and they have different different fields and I'm just accessing the fields. The interesting thing here is that the fields are generated based on the data. But also another interesting aspect of this is that uh, it's not the language that matters. It's the, it's the interaction and the user interface around it that makes this programming experience work. And again, this is something that you can kind of illustrate using a relatively small example. Uh, the third demo I want to show you is the Dengcheck project. And this is uh, work I've done 
recently on a computational substrate for end user programming. And the idea of this is that there's a lot of different interesting compelling end user programming experiences like programming by demonstration, collaborative editing and so on. And uh, implementing all those in, uh, interesting experiences is quite a lot of work. So can we build some sort of underlying library or a computational substrate that will make building things like this easier? And so here's a little example of DingCheck. Uh, DingCheck is a sort of underlying thing, underlying substrate underneath of this. Um, and this is a, one of the case studies in the project, um, which is a little notebook-like uh, environment for working with data. And I can, for example, construct a bit of code to load um, a sample data file. Um, and when I do that and I, and I run it, I see my data. So this has loaded some data. And there's a lot of problems with the data as it's, as it's usually the case. Um, so for example, there's some piece representing provisional, there's colon representing missing data, there's rows that represent aggregates and so on. So what this little environment lets me do is I can load this in an interactive data cleaning grid. And in this, I can use things like programming by demonstration to clean the data. So if I delete the P, it will suggest maybe you want to delete P everywhere. Maybe if I delete colon, I will apply that to all the columns. Uh, I can also rename this, this column, so I'm going to do that. I can split the column using um, the comma as a separator. Uh, then I can continue and I'm only interested in the EU27 rows, so I will delete all those rows. And I also want to delete these two rows because they're sort of representing an aggregate data. So if I do all this, then I've cleaned the data using programming by demonstration. I can sort of take this code and turn it into a cleaned data table. And as a last step, I'm going to add some calculation. So I'll take clean and I will just sum all the data for each of the years. So I get the total number, number of people involved in, in aviation accidents. Um, and again, this is a relatively small uh, use case, case study built on top of uh, some computational substrate, which uh, is kind of just enough to illustrate that this idea could work. It's not trying to build um, a real world big system. Um, so the point of the course is there's lots of interesting areas where you might want to build something like a tiny programming system. And here I've given you kind of more research oriented examples, uh, but I will talk about, about the educational side of this later on as well. Um, so if you're attending the course, the, the idea is, the structure is, or if you want to do it at home, the structure is that I will have uh, for each, there's going to be six different tiny programming systems that we will do. And for each of those, I will have some videos to watch in advance uh, that will introduce the different programming systems. Uh, and also uh, the necessary bits of programming that you will need to implement those. And then uh, we typically have a hands-on three-hour labs where people work on the course, uh, work on the, work on the uh, implementation of a tiny programming systems, and you will get a code skeleton that kind of guides you through the implementation with detailed comments. And if you're taking the course, then uh, it's a good idea to come to the labs to get help, but it's not a requirement. 
and to get the credits for the course we're asking you to complete the basic task for four out of the six uh, different programming systems and uh, if you're interested in other kinds of things that we do then uh, check out the uh, Prague Programming Languages and Systems Research Network, uh, which is a joint effort of the Department of Distributed and Dependable Systems at the Charles University, where I'm based, and the Programming Research Lab at the Czech Technical University. And we often have a PhD or postdoc opportunities, so if any of those projects sound interesting to you, then feel free to reach out.